fun. Hey, AJ, I don't know if you heard. Ho's mad. Are they? Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go, everybody. Here we go. You watch, we're going to get a copyright strike now. Hey, welcome. Hose mad. <laughs> <laughs> can you say hose on a podcast? I, I, I think we can say whatever we damn well please. <laughs> welcome to show 169 here of the Pucknologist. Are we live? Feels like we're live. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Welcome back to the unfiltered, unedited. I don't even want to say this. Uh, we got three games at home this week. But remember, if you are new to the podcast, uh, we have we have social media. So... Subscribe all those places wherever you're at, and uh, hey, if you're gonna get verified, better do it now before they start taking twenty bucks a month from you. You can help support the content we deliver and keep us commercial free using that super chat option during the live shows, if you so wish, or you can use Venmo. You can find us at Teal Town USA. The no, those donations ensure that we don't have to grind the show to a screeching halt and randomly crowbar in 90 seconds to ramble on about, you know, shaving your nethers or online gambling or something. So we appreciate that. If you're not watching us live on YouTube, make sure to add your comments in the section below of this video. Hey, give us a thumbs up. I'm not here to change your mind, man. We're just uh, here to offer our thoughts, right? Because the thought is right now, jerk, hoes mad. Uh, Hose Mad. I, you, oh, I love the shirt. Uh, well, I wasn't I noticed... sure. I, you know, it's like, were you going to rock that? Were you going to rock this? I mean, there's just so many options. I mean, they're all good. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say no to any of them. But Hose but, Mad. Yeah, of course. No, um, you know, so here, here's your useless stat just to really pour it on. And, uh, did you know, here's your little info, uh, Eric Carlson, as it stands Who? right now, is He's currently on pace to eighty bajillion points. <laughs> he's on pace to register um, the most hits in a single season with the Sharks. As in, like hitting it's, other like the opponents. Like you're talking physicality. Correct. And, I'm and not you, buying it. How many? You know how many years? So have what? We talked five about, instead of six or something? <laughs> you know, we 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 talked about how he doesn't hit enough. Well. As he doesn't right hit now, at all. Sure. Um, he still gets credit for some, yeah. but you're right. I mean, and, and that's not his game. I'm not looking at him to, you know, be Brendan Dillon or something. No, of course not. Um, but he's, you know. <laughs> Before everybody he's, jumps on, you know, Twitter, AJ's a moron. He thinks DK should be out there running people. No, that's not what I said. Calm down. Well, you know, so he's he's hitting more, and he's also blocking more shots than he has in the last few years. So, Whatever that means to you. Hey, I guess uh, got to fill those burn shoes somehow, right? Who? <laughs> I don't talk about players not on the team anymore. Oh, I don't know. You bring up bolsters a lot. Who's that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> three games this week. We three know too many, if you ask me. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> Sharks went one and two through 11. They're three and eight. They got six points. Yay. Uh, for those of you math people. Currently seventh in the division. Or at least they were yesterday when I gave a shit. Uh, 30th of 32nd in the league because Anaheim is that goddamn bad. Hey, here's the thing. Sure. This is right where we want them. Uh, if not worse. Right. I mean, come on. Uh, some fun stuff happened this week, though. I mean, it got to be there for uh, Kessel breaking the Iron Man streak, scoring his mm -hmm. 400th, both in the same game. So if you were able to procure one of those warm-up pucks, I'm just letting you know right now the going rate on eBay is 100 so Something if you think about yeah, if you want some free cash. Hey, speaking of things that are going to probably cost a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, what about the thing behind your right shoulder? This beautiful picture of Patrick Marlowe. <laughs> no, I've never heard of that guy. Uh, oh, you mean uh, what uh, EK has been bringing to work this uh, last <laughs> week or so? A little bit of the lunch. Yeah. Uh, he. Um, do you have anything in there? Because he's been taking yours. Oh no, that's the that's the real. Why do you think the box is empty? <laughs> Dude, because Carlson stole it. 
yeah. stole my lunch, dude. I'm lucky. I am lucky that I was able to make my my way out of the locker before the show started. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, do we do we know whether or not you're the one that locked the door to the locker room on him? Do we know if that was you? Can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Marty's saying, "How is the food, AJ? Uh, what are we talking about? Because there was a food and bev event earlier on uh, Tuesday. It was pretty pretty solid, actually. I like uh, a lot of the new stuff that they're doing. I really like the uh, there's a new slushy station where it's like margaritas and rum runners, and uh, I love blended drinks. So good." Um, AJ, are you that big or is the lunchbox that small? Probably both. I am a fucking giant. Uh, two things can be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was the play, Mr. Bunyan? Um, look. What is it? What does it say on the back of there? I'm. What, is <laughs> so what do you think? It has Puck Guy's favorite phrase: "Teal together." Oh yeah, of course. You know, I was I was kind of I'm gonna not gonna lie I was kind of expecting the the back to be a little more redonkulous instead Dynamic. of. Yeah, instead of that, especially when this side looks so good. Yeah, that uh, honestly, like that, even that front side, I don't want to, I don't want to jam them up too much, but that front side kind of looks like an iPhone wallpaper that Puck Guys made up. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're pretty cool. Uh, yes, Sharks Last, that sh- slushy cantina. Dig it. That's the only time I think the word slushy has ever been said on this podcast in a positive manner. Uh, so. <laughs> Look for. Let's get into it. It's it's Eric Carlson week here on the show. Evidently, <laughs> uh, the guy has, for the most part, been killing it since the New York game, winning that in overtime just by sheer will. Mm-hmm. But let's pump the brakes, people. It's a it's a week. You know, it's one good week. I've I've seen this movie before. Uh, with <laughs> if history is any kind of an indicator, I will imagine that Carlson will be hitting the IR sometime around Thanksgiving. Hey, you know what? Uh, I'm not wishing for it, so all of you on social no. media, don't oh. don't, don't throw it down. AJ hopes EK gets injured. No, nope, not what I said. No, of course, and I, and I think with any with any player, good, bad, indifferent, you, you sort of have to take it game by game, right? And it just so happens that with Eric Carlson specifically, game by game, there's not really been a whole lot of drop off. I mean, the offense has been there, but as you know, we were kind of talking about it a little bit. You know, the the defensive side of things, um, maybe it's not perfect, but it's definitely cleaned up a little bit. You know, a little more physicality, a little more block shots, a really really smart play without a stick in his hand. I believe it was against the Maple Leafs. Um, it seems all around his game is in a really good place. And, and as somebody who's a legitimate fan, I, I hope it continues. You know, I don't want to have to come on here and say, yeah, I know he's been bad lately, but he's still really, really good. Um, he leads the entire NHL in scoring for defensemen. I mean, that's what you asked of him. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just kind of <laughs> like, hey, living up to your contract finally. I've been waiting three and a half years for this. Fantastic. Right. So let's, again, let's pump the brakes because the most annoying thing, of course, is Eric has a good week. Hell, a good week. He has a good period. People on social going, you know, where are the haters at now? And it's like, stop. I think he comes out of a game with a, (laughs) without a minus. And it's like, oh, well, I thought he sucked. (laughs) (laughs) You are absolutely right. Uh, Matthew, we talked about this a minute, hot minute ago. Major Canucks news. Uh, emergency press conference tomorrow. Uh, based on what, um, oh God, I put it Frank in. Frank Saravalli. Yeah, Saravalli pissed that fire out and said, look, this is about like a, a TV radio f- announcement. This is like nothing that has to do with front office or staff or players or anything. So, again, pump the brakes. Let's let's get more into the know before we start like going, oh my God, Pedersen's out of there. So, uh, loss against VGK, I mean, Dude, that's a kick in the balls. VGK beat Tampa the night before, mm-hmm. and I thought Reimer started well. It's and these goalies. I mean, they're putting up decent numbers. They just can't get any aside from. Imagine if Eric Carlson wasn't on this team, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Dude, oh, would they have a goal at all? I mean, crap, Almighty. Uh, but 
for all that, you know, we can get into the EK stroking here momentarily, but again, let's pump the brakes. Let's let's take a look at what a, a play that EK made during Vegas. Martinez will collect the loose puck. Smith wheels this one ahead. Here's Carlson. Carlson in on a break. Takes a shot and he scores. Now, uh, I apologize for submitting all of our listeners to hearing anything Leah Hextall has to scream about, but he got piloned. Well, I wouldn't even say he got piloned. He just wasn't there. Yeah. And... Like, generally, generally the defenseman is the first guy back, but if you watch the, the end of that replay again, I believe he was the fourth player back. <laughs> well, uh, Quinn had some, some things to say, as you would imagine, post Vegas. Well, listen, I mean, you know, like you said, we had a really good second period uh, and just, you know, you start the, the third period and just blow face off coverage twice. And, you know, as we touched on, we've continued to shoot ourselves in the foot and we did it there. And it's just, uh, it's disappointing because I thought we we're going to be able to build some momentum off the second period. And that's not what happened. You know, we have a great shift, some sh- chances and, you know, we're fine and just absorbed the rush. They played, they came ready to play. We were sleepy, obviously rebounded in the second period. So, you know, they played back to back. So everybody's got, nobody cares. Everybody's got travel issues. Everybody's got a story to tell. Nobody cares. You just got to play when the game's start. And, you know, we weren't ready to go, but tip our hats to our guys for recovering and having a good second period. You know, that was a winnable hockey game for us. And, you know, we shot ourselves in the foot again at home, and, you know, we've got to be better. We've got to be better and come play 60 minutes, and you know, your, your mistakes cannot be of that magnitude if you're going to have success in this league, and, you know, we're just going to learn some lessons here in a hurry. Well, right off the bat, I mean, the first three shifts, I mean, we blow coverage on the opening faceoff. You know, we make a bad read in the uh, offensive zone, and they end up getting a faceoff in our end, and then we blow coverage on the goal. I mean, just... You know, we never got momentum the first four shifts, and uh, you know, and then I thought we kind of recovered. You know, the you know the way the period was going, with seven before we gave a third goal, they had some chances, we had some chances, and you know, we just uh, you know our mistakes are too big right now. You got to be friggin' ready when a puck's dropped on a faceoff, and we've gone over it, and we're going to keep going over it until we get it right. It's just being mentally ready on a faceoff. And we've simplified it to the point where people have the same responsibilities, win or lose. Very simple. And we blew coverage. Man, you talk about hose mad. I mean, it's kind of like what we talked about, I want to say it was last week, where you don't want the coach to call you out. Don't do anything worth being called out over. And in these three games, you know, the Vegas, all three games, the Sharks were in control in all three of them, and they only walked away with one win. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you see that two two late go-ahead goals for, you know, for the Golden Knights and for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But to Quinn's point, the Sharks were in every game until the very end. And those little, you know, mental flubs, if you will, came back to, to bite them. And, and I, I, don't, I don't know about you. I don't have a single issue with, with, with anything Quinn said. I think mm-hmm. it's all appropriate. Absolutely. I... I do like the fact that, you know, I, I got so tired of I, I loves me some T-Mac. I got so tired of hearing, like, you know, we need more polish. Mm-hmm. We lack polish. Polish, polish, polish. Blah, blah, blah. DeBoer had a couple DeBoer-isms, and Bugner had some of these. I've found Quinn's brutal honesty at times to be quite refreshing, and at least it's an acknowledgement of reality. Well, and the thing is, like, Quinn – to his credit, like he actually says things where you listen to it and you're like, okay, yeah, like I'm following along. I know, I know where you're going with this. Whereas like with, and maybe it's a product of the team being so bad last year, but I think with Bob, it got to a point where it's just like, well, goalie didn't stop pucks. Our players didn't score. And it's like, yeah, like I watched the game. Like tell me something that I can take away. Right. He had almost a bit of a trots. To, or not um, torts. Sure. Little, I mean, I guess, yeah. Eh, a little, a little bit. bit. Just, you know, the, he's, you can see he's got a little feistiness there it's with that East Coast swag. 
Just kind of well, like, you know, these guys need to pull their heads out of their fucking ass. We've been covering this shit for two months. <laughs> well, and here's the other, here's the other thing. Like, I, I know, obviously, in the NHL, like, you know, trade protection is obviously a thing. You're very familiar with that. But no one no one is safe. You know what I mean? Like, you, you from from the perspective of a coach, from a general manager, if you're looking at your team and you say, oh, man, game after game, this guy, we're constantly having to talk to him about, you know, needs to skate harder in the defensive zone, needs to do – stay out of the penalty box, needs to, you know, be more quick on the puck, you know, in the neutral zone. Like, you, we're always telling him something – Eventually, it's going to get to a point where it's just like you're not helping our team. We're going to get rid of you, and Hell yeah. no one is safe, you know. And so it's like it, it just puts a bow on what I said last week, what I said a couple of minutes ago. Don't play bad if you don't want your coach to tell you that you played bad. I mean, I don't know any better way to put it. No one is safe unless your name is Tomas Hurdle. Evidently, evidently, if you listen to Pierre LeBron. So, yeah, it was, it was one of a game. The one that they did win against the Leafs, like I don't want to, I don't want to be sit here and be the contrarian and be the guy who like pisses out every fire and all that. But I do think context matters. So while you can sit there and go, "Hey, they beat the Leafs," and you know, and the Leafs are predicted to do really well, and but sure, sure, absolutely, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. However, the Sharks. <laughs> they were they were given two full minutes five on three. They played if if memory serves, Toronto started their third goalie. There's a lot of people going, who the fuck is Eric Schalgen? Right, but to <laughs> to to be the contrarian to your contrarianism, <laughs> like do, do those cancel each other out then? The the Sharks like against the Toronto Maple Leafs, despite what their record tells you, they're a good team and they've got good players. And the Sharks hung in there with them. Any, you know, Toronto tied the game up uh, early in the third period. The Sharks didn't get rattled. They stuck around. They freaking scored on the power play. Like, I know you, twice. you know, there, re, twice. There's a lot that you can look at that game and you can say, well, you know, yeah, it's the Leafs, but X, Y, Z. And it's like, you know, okay, sure, you can make those points. But at the end of the day, the Sharks hung in there with a playoff a likely playoff team they hung in there with a really good team and you know regardless of how it ended like that's i'm not to say that that's a sign of things to come but it's an encouraging sign to to the point you made at the beginning of the season is play with some excitement play like we're going a direction you know what i mean Mm -hmm. well i wanted to find out from you because we've had a discussion like this before I don't, we might have even gotten into it last week or the week before, but we talked about that that game, that overtime matchup versus Edmonton, where who, who did Bugner who? who did Bugner put out there? And you're like, what the fuck? I think I think it was. I want to say it was like it was like Benino Nieto, and I think Mario Ferraro. I think so. Were your you know chains a little rattled when overtime started with Couture, Sturm, and Ferraro versus I, Matthews, Marner, and Riley? You know, I, 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 I was a little, it was a little peculiar to me, but, you know, I tried to think about it from the coach's perspective and, it, and, you know, it's like, okay, if they can hang in there with Matthews on the ice, then they'll send out the number one unit while the Matthews unit is changing, which it was the same strategy that Bugner yeah, employed the same strategy that, yes, you're correct. Same strategy that Bob had. However, the different being is that David Quinn Davey, he put out uh, personnel that can hang in there oh. against your Connor McDavid, your Austin Matthews. Like there, there's a lot, and and even last week, there's a lot that can be said about Couture this season. I was not very nice to him a week ago, but you know what? In that game specifically, they put him out there against the Austin Matthews trio, and he hung in there. Well, for me, the Leafs game it was uh, definitely a game of atonement, you know. But sure. Meyer with the stupidest blind pass I know <laughs> what the hell he was thinking of uh, you get an unforced EK penalty he puts it over glass you know that leads to the OT finish but have you noticed I have you pretty I definitely going back to last year and I can't speak for before last year but have you noticed that lately it seems like a majority of the penalties the Sharks take 
are those unforced ones? Delay of game, too many men. The last week, it seems like, yeah. Like, it just seems like, it seems like once or twice a game, either, you know, Drew or Brett or whoever is saying, oh, too many men right there. Or they're saying, oh, you know, or you just, you're watching it, the camera comes in, the camera, you see the puck flying over the glass. Like, those two penalties specifically have become increasingly regular going back the last two seasons. And that's just lazy hockey. Wasn't there a string of that shit last season? There mm-hmm. was like like eight of ten games. They either had a puck over glass or a hella dudes. Well, and, and that's the thing. Specifically with puck over glass, you know, you need – it. let's just say because you brought it up, say you're Eric Carlson. Well, you need Jacob Megna to be yelling at you, you know, either – hold on, you got time, or get rid of it, or pass it back to me. Any of those three things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like you said, it, it it prevents the error from happening, right? And specifically with too many men, and I know anybody who plays hockey knows this is a strategy, but, you know, it, it, it's a low percentage play. You throw the buck, puck towards the bench while the team is changing, see if one of them instinctively puts their stick down to grab it. It's a low percentage play. Unless you're the Sharks, because the Sharks seem to fall for it quite irregularly. You are and so I don't, I don't give the other team credit for trying the move, but it, it's just to the point of like, hey, like if you're getting off the ice, get off the ice. Like, <laughs> you know, like don't just say, oh, man, what a shift. I got to, you know, just jump over if you have to. But just, you know, in those areas where you need to be some, a little more urgent, show it, you know, and and and. You know, one of the things they the broadcast the one of the things I do actually like that the broadcast mentions is how it doesn't cost anything to talk to each other. Absolutely. And that's like that's the big one. Like and I was explaining this to my fiance. We were watching a variety of sporting events and I said, Oh, if I'm in that position, I'm yelling at whoever, you know, get rid of it, give it to me, hold it. Like you just mouth should always be open. <laughs> wow, mouth breathers. <laughs> Finally, the, the Tampa game against Tampa. Another one where I mean they Another gave heartbreaker. Up, yeah, they gave up the early goal. Ek sixty five gets it a minute later, gets it back, and you're like, okay, maybe it just it, the the Sharks historically suck at matinee games, right? Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, they it just takes them a while for them to wake up. But after Carlson tied it in that first minute, I'm like, okay, I I think the uh, the Sharks got to got a shot here and it was such a back and forth game Mm -hmm. like what in the world was that about (laughs) well and and to your point it featured a lot of excitement yes no definitely a lot of back and forth and uh, a lot of hope and then despair and then hope Mm -hmm. (laughs) despair such a seesaw game but uh quinn had some things to say about the mistakes in this one well it's frustrating and uh you know, I thought in between we did a lot of good things. I thought we had a really good third period, score the goal to tie it, have a good power play, don't get, any, get anything from it, but and then did a great job killing. And even before the goal, we had some chances uh, on, in our offensive play and just made a bad, bad read coming back in our end. And as we've been saying for 11 games, it's just these incredible, untimely mistakes that are of too big a proportion. And if you're going to win hockey games, you can't do it. And it's disappointing because there's just a lot of good things going on. I think we're going in the right direction. But at the end of the day, you're going to win hockey games. And, you know, unfortunately, we're uh, we're not quite there yet. I love the untimely mistakes, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, have you never watched the Sharks before coming here? <laughs> I'm like, this is a feature, not a bug. Yeah. it's Unfortunately, it's something that happens with quite a bit of regularity where – I don't want to say you get your hopes up, but you know you think maybe things are starting to trend in the right direction, and then it's it's that it's that old expression of like, why can't we have nice things? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. Right. Uh, Quinn on EK 65's game, you remember scored two in this one. Yeah, I mean, listen, the last two games he just looked like a Norris Trophy winner. I mean, you know, he's uh, offensively and defensively he's done it all for us. So you know, I'm really happy for him. I'm happy for us and you know we're, we're getting there I know like I've been saying it but we're really that's a good team we just played and you know you beat Toronto that and you know obviously you lose with six minutes to go against Vegas and we've played three really good hockey teams and you know sitting here at one and two and could have been different could be different but could have would have should have right you just got to find a way to get it done and right now 
you know, they're pissed off right now. They're pissed. You can feel it. And, uh, you know, I think that we are building the expectations to win hockey games. I think guys, you know, you finish this three game stretch so far and you look across the way and it's, you know, it wasn't like we didn't just play well against one team. We played pretty well, could have won all three, really. And, you know, um, so I think there, there's more believability than there was maybe uh, at 0 and 5. Could have won all three. Absolutely. It's, uh, <laughs> If somebody in the top six can, I don't know, start scoring? Well, it, it, it's just that playing the full game, right? I mean, you look at you look at the game against Golden Knights. You know, the winning goal for Vegas was scored with just under six minutes left. You look at the game against Tampa Bay. Kucherov gets the winning goal in the last minute. It's like just you, you can't have that mindset of, okay, we're hanging in there. You know, we just need to hang in there till overtime. You know, you need to make sure that you're completely buttoned up the whole way through. And obviously, like – it's inevitable. Every team, every player is going to have a mental mistake at some point, but you have to make sure that one, it doesn't cost your team. And two, if it does cost your team, you or someone, you know, someone needs to step up and make it right. And you, you can't allow, like you said, you can't allow these unforced errors to continue to happen. And, and I agree, you know, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, you know, as an Eric Carlson fan, I love seeing him do well. As somebody who pegged Nico Sturm as the player to watch in week in week one, I love seeing him do well. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's a vi- it's been a very good four weeks for my ego. But <laughs> like, need more from Tomas Hurdle. You need more from Timo Meyer. Luke Cunnan. Who? Hello. Like he, I give him credit. He's worked on staying out of the penalty box. That's a really good positive thing. But where are you going from there? You know, what's your next step? And I, Barbie, I love you. You've been the best forward on the team this year. Would love to see a goal. You know, there, Oscar Lindblom, same thing. Mm-hmm. I like Oscar Lindblom. We need to see something for you. I hate to say it. I think I've lost all hope for Kevin LeBanc at this point. Oh, we're going to um, get to that. But, you know, to, you're right. Like, what we're seeing from certain players, we love it and we want to see more. But that doesn't mean that other players get to just sort of skate by and 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 live in the shadows you know oh well carlson scored so we're okay no you can't have that mindset well i'm glad you bring that up because that's something that kind of stuck in my craw a little bit after the toronto game is seeing reports i think both shang and pashelka both tweeted out uh good good mood in the in the locker room dressing room whatever good mood they're blaring Toronto's goal song. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got a losing fucking record, and you're you're trying to troll Toronto, and you're like twenty seventh out of thirty two. Okay, but like, I, I mean, get what you- I, I get you want to keep you know spirits up and and all that, but it just seemed kind of a, I don't know. Well, so here, let me let me be the contrarian. Let that's me a, be the that's contrarian. A mo- that's a that's a that's a move when you're ten and two after twelve, not two and ten. You know. Sure, and I I completely understand what you're saying, but let me let me be the contrarian. So I feel like we're gonna have a lot of contrarians. <laughs> so after after the win against the Maple Leafs, the Sharks they they found themselves at three and seven, right? Hmm? Three seven and zero. When you win one game, one game doesn't make up all that ground. So, you know, people can say, my opinion is people can say, oh, you know, you won, you you know, you've won three of your last 10, congratulations. But it's like, you're not going to make up that ground in one win no matter what. You might as well celebrate the win you had and hope that some combination of the morale from winning plus the effort you put in the game, you hope that some combination of that pushes you forward to the next one and then the next one and the next one. Well, like they say, the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> right. So <laughs> Alex telling me uh, what AJ was expecting Greer to go into the locker room, Billy Bean style with the Moneyball tirade. No, I'm not going like that, but I'm just, I don't know. It, Smacked a little, it put kind of a little bit of a bad taste. Like again, I I see your side of it. Like, hey, you want to keep the spirits up? I I think you could you could have chosen just a different song, sure. You know, instead of the tro- like maybe you did. Hall and Oates have a huge body of work. You you could have chosen another song. There's a lot to pick from. I mean, maybe that's part of maybe that's part of their team building though. True, true. 
perhaps. Uh, let's get the final word on the Tampa game from Mario Ferraro. Yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Um, I mean, I don't have many words. Um, it sucks. That one stings probably the most. We know that's a good team, and we're in a really good spot there, and we battled back, tied up in the third. We did a lot of good things, but, you know, just things you got to clean up. It is what it is. Um, I wish we got to learn from it. It sucks, but, I mean, it's pretty fresh right now. So, yeah, it's hard to feel good right now, to be honest. Um, but we're playing a lot better. Uh, you know, we we uh, we deserved a, a better result tonight. Um, like I said, it's it's hard to focus on the good that we did today right now because it's pretty fresh. So, um, but that's all we can do. We we got to move on and see the things that we did well. And just look forward and get ready for the next game. I love that. You know, it sucks. Doesn't feel good. Blah blah blah. But we felt really good two days ago. <laughs> and are you kidding me? The Ducks are now up four to three on the Maple Leafs. Yeah, it was two to four about five minutes ago. Are they going to be like mass, <laughs> just mass exodus out of Toronto? Like, what in the hell is going on with these with this team? They can't, they can't well, do anything right. Here's here's when was my... the last time they won a game for Christ's sakes? Oh, jeez. It's been... <laughs> it's been a minute, dude. I mean, lost to Vegas, lost to San Jose. They're losing to Anaheim right now. Did they yeah, did think, they beat oh, they the beat, Kings at some point? I believe they beat LA last night, I believe. Oh, jeez. And Anaheim is doing that. <laughs> here's the, here's <sighs> the thing. Here's kind of my theory about it. There's And, and this comes from... Um, for some reason, this comes from me listening to it more Toronto, maybe, Toronto radio than I probably should. But... There's been a lot of conversation of like, okay, like we know we're a good team. We just not from the players, but just like from fans. We know we're a good team. You know, we need to like get to April and the first round is gonna be the true test, which on some level I agree with, but that doesn't mean shit if you don't get there. That's what I'm saying. I, and it's <clears> feel, <throat> and I can't you know, I, I haven't watched a Maple Leafs game besides their one against the Sharks, so I can't I can't say for absolute certainty what exactly what exactly is going on, but it just kind of feels like, I don't know. It, it, it feels like maybe the personnel that they have there on the, you know, the lower end of the lineup is maybe just not quite enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the top guys can only do so much. It also doesn't help when, you know, two of their six defensemen are on the long-term injury list. I mean, that's certainly not helpful, but you know, there's something there and well, I, it's hard to put my finger on. We talk about, you know, what's the end game, Chief? Do, I mean, I'm rooting for the Ducks to do well, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> but give give uh, San Jose better odds to uh, get, get the big pick. But the, the, the one that really is kind of a kick in the balls is, um, oh, I'm sorry. F they updated it. I thought Vetrano got it because that, that was, I like Vetrano. I was a little bummed about that. Uh, Golden Knights and Jets are in overtime right now, by the way, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So, anyway, look, it it wasn't a great week for, for San Jose. I mean, they two out of a possible six points. Um, I mean, this we can't complain about this. This is what we wanted. This is what we predicted without, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we're the only ones that predicted it because – a lot of people like, yeah, they're gonna. The Sharks are gonna suck ass this year, and so far, for the most part, they have. So the some of the people that I don't know kind of lose their shit. Low. I can't believe it. No, this is kind of what we want. This is a transition. Um, yeah, I, I like like I said, and I was trying to explain this to I was trying to explain this to someone. Like, oh, the Kings I, beat the Leafs. Yeah, actually, I just saw that. Holy so. crap! Yeah, okay. So I go back to my point. When was the last time this team won a fucking game? <laughs> Christ, and you know, with I love the fact. First off, Dangle's head has got to be exploding. But the thing that really gets me is uh, Ramenda had some really funny comments on the uh, the build up to the Toronto game, where he very much kind of like called out the media with the whole uh, what, what you know, how does whatever happens, like Vancouver's holding a press conference tomorrow. How does this impact Toronto? Right, you know, so the. Currently, Toronto, they, they've lost their last three games, two in regulation, one in overtime, obviously, to the Sharks. And unless unless they get some 
oh, I think the goal might have been called back. It's 3-3 three to three now. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing P- Pinota is saying, wow, no goal, call, call, goalie interference called. Are you kidding me? I Now I'm going to have to go want to take a look at that because I guarantee you it wasn't goalie interference. <laughs> Man, they need to fix that. I'm sorry, you were saying? No, I just think – like, <laughs> Fuck I, Toronto, I was... moving on. Well, no, I, so going back to the, the original point, you know, you, you brought up about – expectations and how people feel about the team and all that kind of stuff. Like Mm -hmm. I know myself personally, I know the sharks are bad and I have zero expectations for them. So like if they lose, yeah, you know, it bums you out because it's like, you don't want them to lose, but you know that that's what was going to happen. And if they win, Hey, you know what? You get to be happy for however long. Yeah. But I, I kind of think right now it's like in their best interest to lose. I agree, and I and I know a lot of people. You know, there's there's a lot of conversation about you know Connor Bedard. It needs to be Bedard, all this stuff. But here's here's the thing. Like, any of the top three ranked prospects would be a major ad for the Sharks. Like, I know I know Bedard is the sexy pick, but if they fall in the top three, it's a win no matter what. Mm-hmm. Well, and you, <clears throat> excuse me. You talked about uh, some of the things, kind of. Changing around, special teams this week had it. They had a good week. They were six for seven on the kill, three for eight on the power play. That's that's pretty good. Now, again, context matters. Two out of those three power play goals. That was the the five on three versus Toronto. Hey, they still got it. Yeah, no, I mean it's what you want to see. Like, how pissed off would you be? You can't even score five on three. What the hell, right? Well, and and you know what? And I thought the power play as a whole. I thought the power play looked good. Like just the way they. I mean, at least the the first power play unit, you know, the way <laughs> the, the, the way the top loaded one, right? The way they they move the puck, the way they get shots on net, you know, they move themselves, like they're moving the puck, but also move themselves. I thought in uh, the game against Tampa Bay, one of the power plays the Sharks had, Eric Carlson had, mold. I want to say he had three or four shot attempts, and they were all from different places on the ice. And, you know, one at the top of the point, one kind of on the side of the faceoff circle, one at the other side. And it's just, you know, there, there's a lot you want to see with a power play. And, like, yeah, moving the puck is important, but move your body as well. Because if you're just – if you're stationary, you just planted, that's an easy shot to block. But the minute you start, you know, you – and it's – what did I say a couple weeks ago? You know, you want to get the penalty killers to chase you. That's when you get them on the hook. Well, I feel like that top-loaded unit – I mean, and Quinn – to, again, I go back to Quinn's honesty. He's like, "Yeah, we're going to top load the crap out of it." And, and why wouldn't they? Because if they split it up, then the power play as a whole is going to suck. Yeah. Well, and then they let's be honest. They just they don't have enough talent. To, I think at this point, the power play two unit, it, it's just kind of like, don't give up a goal. Uh, just, right. Just just try to keep it in the offensive zone until we can switch back. Well, I and you know what? I think there's, I don't know. I think they there's some you know, combination for a PP2 that I think they could, Sharks could roll out there and feel good about. Like, I'm kind of reserved at this point to just rolling out Eric Carlson on both power play units. Oh, but, fuck it, man. Let him play the full two. No no K, no K, PK time for him. Play the full right. two yep. on the PP. But, like, you look at, so let's look at power play two from last night's game uh, or yesterday's game. It's your fivesome. It's it's Cunning, Sturm, Lindblom, Ferraro, and LeBanc. Well, four of those five guys either don't have a goal or are in a goal slump. Mm-hmm. So at what point do you say, hey, you're not helping us. You're gone. Not gone like off the team, but just gone off the power play unit. Like, well, and that's why... the thing that, that, that makes me a little apprehensive. And so far, mm-hmm. I think the Sharks have, have played this correctly. I look at some of that and in, in how offensively inept this team is, and I'm like, God damn it, they're going to fucking call it Bordalo. Or they're gonna, you know, they're gonna no. call up a piece or two, and I'm gonna be like, no, don't do it. No, it's like it's like I said before. They're not. There's there's too many bodies for him to have to leapfrog. They're not calling him up anytime soon. I don't think. God, I hope not. And and you know, with specifically with the power play, you know, like obviously those five players I named, yeah, just based on name, name and skill, they're probably the best five you could put out there for a PP two. But at some point, you know, if a player's not helping you, they're not helping you. Yeah. Uh, looks like. Uh... Vegas and Winnipeg is going to a shootout. Uh, let's see here. Well, and you talked about uh, guys not. I mean, Couture and Meyer finally get off the schneid. But right now, I mean, Meyer, that one goal in 10 games, I don't know about you, but I think that averages out to like eight goals this season if you prorate it. 
he i'll tell you what he (laughs) he is going to have a epic second seventh of the season (laughs) okay (laughs) are you kidding me what did he have it was 35 right uh yes last year last year was 35 yeah 35 there was talk about him getting to 40 at one point but 35 and remember five of those came in one game against la but they still got him yep so 35 could, could you imagine if he doesn't hit 10 this year and what does what does that do for contract negotiations I'll tell you this. Well, what does it do for contract negotiations? It says, hey, if you want to be here, you're going to sign what we give you. No. Um, but the thing, like, like, and I think we talked about it last week, at some point, it's going to, at some point, it has to end. Like, the, there's this. The dam has to open, you mean? Yeah, the, da- the dam, with stuff like this, the dam does not stay sealed uh, for an entire season. It's just, at some point, just law law of, percentages tells you that it's going to break at some point i'm i still think just the type of player he is the rate the rate that he scored at i know everybody says oh last year whatever career high but like he's put up good seasons before last year and and even in those seasons you know the rate with which he can score goals has always been at an exceptional height and at this game i i know you mentioned he has one goal in 11 games here it still would not surprise me um, it still would not surprise me to see him get to 30 just because, you know, we, we've talked about shooting percentages, what's average, what's not. Timo Meyer is one of those guys where his average shooting percentage is higher than the league average. So just the numbers tell you that the goals are going to come at some point. Well, he's got twice as many shot, as, shots as the next guy beneath him. <laughs> I mean, well, he's got 53 shots on goal. Carlson's next with 27. Well, and that's the thing, and I and I like I know I know we've we've talked about like low percentage shots and and valuable shots, especially a couple of years ago. But like when, at that point, again, the way that Timo Meyer can score goals and just how things are going for him this season, like I'm shooting everything, you know. And and would you believe me if I told you that Timo Meyer actually leads the NHL in shots on goal? <laughs> I would absolutely believe it. I said on Tuesday when we were uh, we we're up in the penthouse for the, the Vegas game, and I, I popped off, and I'm like, this, Meyer has more shots than a CVS with a new batch of Moderna and Pfizer. Yeah. Dude dude is getting them up. They're just not going in, so it's... It's only a matter of time, if you ask me. I felt like we kept saying that about a player last season, too, and it just never seemed to manifest. I know who you're talking about, and I think... Tell I me think who it is, because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, Noah Gregor. Yes, yes, yes. And, well, it's hard to hard to score this season when you're like you know scratched every game, right? And I and you know what I've actually I've liked. So I've liked keep what that David... on because I want to find out like how many games is he going to put, fucking Golden Knights won it in overtime. Um, I want to know is Gregor going to play more? What's more, games played or games scratched? Because right now I think he has more games scratched than he has played so far. Yeah, and it's it's really unfortunate, you know, not to not to say that he's been good and has earned the right to be in the lineup, but I don't think anybody on that fourth line has earned it more than him, right? Mm, well, like I don't know like, that, dude. Take the your, line, take your the pick, line, Gregor over Nieto. But the line has been set on Frappe. I would say Nieto has earned it more. Fail. <laughs> Wrong answer. I'll give you another try. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, no, you know I, I, mean? I would. I think Nieto is. Uh, t- I mean, shit. He's got more goals than than Gregor. Although, again, I go back to well, it's hard to score if you're not in the game. Right, and I just think, and and I know it's. I don't know. I go back and forth. It's definitely a balancing act. You know, as I as I said with the power play two a couple minutes ago, like at a certain point, if your good players are not helping you, they're not helping you, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time. You, the the way that you let players work out of their funks is by continuing to play them, right? I mean, <laughs> evidently I, and, not the Quinn model, right? Well, it's not the model of the last three coaches the Sharks have had, and 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 you know, and I and I know you're gonna love this because you you love when you know you love the past, but like <laughs> think about think Pavelski, about how many Pavelski. no, but think about how many think about how many stretches where Patrick Marlowe went without a goal. And he was never scratched because 
Ron Wilson and Todd McClellan, they knew, hey, yeah, this guy's not scoring for us, but we're not he's not gonna get out of this funk if we don't play him. Yeah. I'm right there so with you. It's a balancing act. I think, like, as, again, I don't think Gregor has really done anything to earn being in the lineup, but I also don't think anybody else has earned it over him, if that makes sense. All right. Well, we're talking about, you know, the, these players and whatnot, and uh, Pierre Lebrun set Twitter on fire uh, after it was reported that uh, Lebrun on Insider Trading says, in talking to other teams around the league – the Sharks have let it be known they are willing to listen on pretty much every player on their roster other than perhaps Tomas Hurdle. Uh, jerk, I would have figured that, I mean, that's being reported like yesterday, day before. Like, <laughs> how was that like not reported as the season started? <laughs> well, I mean, can I, you know, can I, can I sort of. Oh, first... Zegris wins it in overtime for the Ducks. Hilarious. <laughs> go Leafs, go. <laughs> can I can I burst your bubble here? Hey now. And 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 you can throw up the statement. Here we go. Here we go. Go ahead. There you go. Uh, so Mike Greer is willing to listen on everybody except for Tomas Hurdle. Now, you read that statement and you're like, oh man, the Sharks are really just they're all in on making changes. But let's like let's really really think about it. Like, is is saying that no one is off the table? Like, is that really that profound of a statement? Because, yeah, I mean, can't you pretty much say that about every team in the league? Well, that's what I'm saying. Because if I'm I and again I have zero experience beyond online fantasy leagues as a general manager. And armchair but, cap friendly. Right, but my opinion is that a good general manager recognizes that everybody is available at all times and it all comes down to what will you give me for this player so you hear the statement and you think oh man wow the sharks are really just going for it but like i bet if you took the sharks out of it that statement you could apply that statement to every team because that's just that's what good gms do they always listen no matter where their team is they're always listening yeah I like this tweet that Pichelka just put out. It says, genuinely cur uh, curious to see what attendance is like at Mullet Arena come February, March, and April. Not tickets sold, asses in seats. Yeah, I'm real interested to see that as well because I'll tell you, the, the game against Vegas, you know, I went to two of the three games this week. The game against Vegas, they reported 12,000. Dude, there's no fucking way it was 12,000. It was about maybe 9,000. Felt about half full. Mm -hmm. So, and... <laughs> whew. And then if you watched the game against Toronto, from all reports, you know, it was a little bit better. 12,500, at least that's what they're reporting. But you listen to people that were there, they're like, dude, it felt like a Toronto home game. Like, people were chanting, go Leafs, go. So, I don't know. But anyway... <clears throat> LeBron added uh, the Sharks payroll and roster right now has a bunch of guys, uh, or as Ian likes to put it. Uh, oh, by the way, happy birthday to Ian Reed! So yes, throw that in the throw that in the chat. Um, but yes, happy birthday to our bro Ian. Um, but uh, yeah, payroll and roster now has a bunch of guys, or as Ian likes to say, the Guy Factory, uh, led by the likes of Eric Carlson with full no move clauses and his no move is locked in till the end of the contract. Is that correct? You are correct. It's, it's a full no move all the way through. Okay, so it's not like the hurdle thing where after the first five years, then it opens. Cool. Correct, and that's and that's with Vlasic, Vlasic as well, where mm -hmm. this this year is the final year that Vlasic has a full no move. Starting next year, it's the modif It's the the Doug Wilson special, the three team <laughs> the three team trade list, and. Then with Couture, uh, he's got the three-team trade list all the way through, and that's three teams he will go to. Yeah, because there's you got to be careful with the language because some players have the the package where it's these are the ten I'm okay with, and then others have these are the ten that I'm not okay with. Mm -hmm. So you, you always got to be careful with the wording. Finesse it, uh, but he LeBron further goes on to say it's going to be difficult for Mike Greer to enact the kind of change he wants. But that's his intention over the next couple of years. Well, I mean, couldn't you say that for any new GM? Like he's, well, he's going to shape this the way that he wants. And well, look, you know, the 
Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, let me finish this off. Uh, among the Sharks' most expensive veterans, Hurdle, Carlson, Vlasic currently have no moves, while Logan has a three-team trade that you were just mentioning. Vlasic changes to the three-team next season. Hurdle's contract is full no move for this season and the following two years before it becomes a modified in the beginning of the 2025-26 uh, season. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, last week we were talking about rebuild, specifically Los Angeles and Boston, where they went through a rebuild while keeping some prominent players and came out on the other side. And, and I still stand by what I said a week ago where the Sharks can be that team. The Sharks can hold on to Hurdle and Meyer and Eric Carlson – and rebuild and then come out at the other side. You know, the Sharks mm -hmm. can do that. That said, based on what you're referencing, the Pierre Lebrun report and all that stuff, this is shaping up to be the fourth year in a row the Sharks missed the playoffs. It eventually has to get to a point where Mike Greer will go to, let's just say, like Kevin LeBanc, for example. And I know we've picked on him a little bit, but he goes to Kevin <laughs> and Le LeBanc and says, hey, you know, we love you. You're a great player. We think you're skilled, but... It's not working here, so you're gone. And same thing with with. I know those are probably not good. That's probably not a good example because he does have no trade protection. But even for Couture and Vlasic, at a certain point, it's hey, we love you, but you're not helping us. What are your three teams? Hey now, so I mean, something I thought was funny was uh, what as we like to do our wagers from time to time. I'm not saying we're yep. going to wager on this, but well, it's a long season. What do you think happens first? Timo scores his second or Hurdle scores his second? I think just kind of like what I mentioned before, just the sheer number of shots on goal. Oh, Timo bust Between first. the two, it's going to be Timo. I, I, and I, I hate to even say this because I like the idea of them tormenting other teams in the league together, but I wouldn't be surprised if Timo Meyer got two goals before Hurdle's next goal. Well, and they played the Ducks two out of the next three games. So, holla! <laughs> Wonder if they'll go with uh, Gibby or Stolars. We'll find out. But yeah, I'm just kind of wondering about that. Has uh, Has Nashville won a game yet in, in the U.S.? Uh, they've won one, I Jesus. believe. 30th and 31st in the NHL in goals scored per game. No more Euro trips is what we're trying to say. Well, and you know, and Oof. and I don't know specifically to that. I know Randy Hahn was mentioning it on the broadcast of the Toronto game. Like, we've seen it, and and don't, I think the Euro games are really cool. We talked about it week one, but we've seen it every year where the team that comes back from Europe, even if you you give them the full week off, there's still an adjustment period that's reflected on the standings. And I'm just I'm wondering if there's more steps to be taken that can fix that issue. Yeah, something in the way to mitigate that because it woofa. Uh. Maybe you, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe you play the Euro games at uh, the on PlayStation. No, I mean, but maybe you do it. <laughs> I I know that it's the sexy way to open the season. I get it, but maybe you play the Euro games as like the final games before the All Star break, because you know, mm -hmm. you know, the All Star break is five days off, and then half the league gets five days off right after the All Star break. So. You could have it where your Euro game, your Euro teams, they play and then get ten days off, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know the Sharks had, I think six, five or six, you know, so it you know six days off, ten days off, you know, it sounds small, but I mean, I don't know about you, if I could take four days off extra, I think I would do it, you Hell know, yeah. or do it at the end of the season. Yeah, well, you talk about team mode shooting. What is it, one point nine right now? Uh, his shooting percentage, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, right now his shooting percentage, it's one it's one point nine percent. His career average every every year he's never with the exception of the hub, the COVID hub year, he's never been under ten percent. You know who's shooting eleven point eight right now? Who's that? Rudy Balsers. Of course he is. Huh. Pavelski's at seventeen point four. <laughs> regress, regress, yeah, regress. You know, is he going to re? Know, I mean, dude, I know you want to talk about it. Is he going to resign again there? Pavelski? Like, yeah, like he just won't. It just seems like he won't go away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hockey player won't die. Like, I love Pavs. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like. Dude, if he, you keep. I mean, yeah, dude, I he's going to go uh, the Thornton special, right? Just go year over year? 
Yeah, but like my whole point is like how many times have you and I think we talked about this last year, how many times have you heard of a player getting better as they age? It's, uh, never. It's, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It just makes you wonder like uh, like why was the adjustment per, like I don't know if he had some injury shit that he needed to get over. Or I think that might have had something to do with it plus the just the adjustment because man, once that bubble hockey started, he was just booyah. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You know Shemolevsky has 10 goals. He does. Dude, 17 points in 23 games. And uh, Burns doing all right, six points in eight games. But anyway, uh, all right, is it time? Hoves man! Hoves man! <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say that Carlson is the hero of the week as we do our hero in zero. I mean, five goals in 11 games matching a career-best goal-scoring start to the season. Five and 11 to begin 12-13. Carlson now has the best goal scoring start to uh, a season in his career with six and eleven. And Quinn mentioned uh, the, we played the the clip earlier, but you know looks like a, a Norris Trophy winner. And again, happy for you. And I'm gonna let you finish, but I've seen this before. Let's 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 pump the brakes until we have Carlson doing this up through uh, Valentine's Day. I, I I get the point you're trying to make, and on some level I agree with it, but I don't know that we have seen this yet because I know people are going to, oh, well, that six-week stretch in 2018, he was incredible. And but, I know, Yeah, but they keep bringing that up just like Game 7. Did somebody say Game 7? <laughs> no. Like, but, here's, but here's the thing, kind of like I mentioned at the, at the top of the hour here, like when have we seen Eric Carlson step up on the offense – while also hitting more, blocking more shots. Taking yeah, no, that that more. part has been impressive. You know, but the, like especially, and I and I even tweeted about it. Like when he didn't have the stick in the hand, I was waiting. I was literally on Twitter, like, "Fuck, what's AJ gonna say?" And he <laughs> had an epic move to to get the puck away, and despite not having a stick, like it's just, it seems like the little nuances are trending in the right direction yeah. for him. So we'll, we'll we'll throw it out. I'm I'm done this week. I'm out. <laughs> Mode. There you go. I, you, so I was mode. We're we're both in agreement that like Eric Carlson, as you said, he's been the the treat of the week. You know, for your Halloween fans out uh, there, dude. I mean, to to I can't remember uh, who who started the phrase, but the, you know, the straw that stirs the drink. Even though it's a silly cliche, I mean, it mm -hmm. it's been true. It if anything, Carlson's success, like over the last couple of weeks, has. I don't know, maybe put it a, a spotlight, a magnifying glass, if you will, on Hurdle and Couture and mm -hmm, the totally. you know, Meyer. So is there any like like as you know, we both obviously, as I said, we we agree Carlson is the the treat of the week, but it like is there just one maybe one player where you thinking, ah, you know what? Nobody's talked about it, but he's been really good. I don't know. I almost feel like you could say that about Nico every week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it, that's a safe pick, yeah, dude. I, God, I love. I, to me, I mean, easily the best off signing. Glad that they have him for a couple of seasons. That it wasn't one of the uh, the one year deals. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I might, I might kind of go off board a little bit and say, uh, I mentioned it earlier, um, Nieto. Like, he he's mm -hmm. not going to post ridiculous numbers, but he's not making bonehead moves. Like it's. Kind of like what you said, I, I think, a year or two ago where he wasn't properly deployed in San Jose, his first tour of duty, goes to Colorado, is properly deployed, and oh, wow, this guy, for what they're asking him to do, for what you want him to do, he does it right. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I, I'd give a, I'd give, you know, not a, not a full crack, but I'd give a little tap of the stick to Nieto. Sure. And, and you know, I, uh, you're... Uh... I think you're correct and you're fair, but it hurts my villain arc, so I don't like it. Um, <laughs> not about you being correct, but about you being correct about Nieto. Um, <laughs> but I think, for me, Jacob Megna comes to mind. I mean, we've seen yes, like absolutely. just kind of a two pronged situation here. So like he's he's been uh, Eric Carlson has been with. Harrington, preseason and regular season. Harrington, New Devara, Mario Ferraro, uh, Jacob Magna. Like it, it's been a rotating cast of characters. I Magna, wonder. If, I wonder if Carlson, some of his success should be, you know, a little credit to Magna. 
Yeah, I will. And and Carlson Carlson even said he said that I don't I don't remember which game it was after, but he he said that he said he likes playing with Magna because Magna is so just calm and just so sturdy, and it and it allows Carlson to do what he's got to do. And and so I think it's kind of two pronged where of the D partners Carlson's had this year, Magna has been the best, but also comparing last year to this year, Magna, despite being 30 years old, Magna has improved his game compared to last year. And I think it's worth a shout. The uh, reasonable facsimile from Middleton. Yeah, could be. I mean, it seems so. I guess what we're trying to say is that as long as you have a big, calm defensive partner for Carlson, whose last name starts with an M, all will be fine. Would you believe me if I told you that in terms of the statistics, you know, points plus minus uh, advanced stats, would you believe me if I told you that he's the second best defenseman on the team right now? That wouldn't shock me in the least, despite <laughs> the fact that Vlasic and Shimmick have been better this season. Absolutely. I. It's not, it's not good, but it's better, I think, is the way to describe everything. Yeah, it feels like Carlson and Magna... Uh, are complimenting would, each other right now. I would lock that in. As far as I'm concerned, everything else is up in the air, but I would lock that in. Uh, you think Nudavar is healthy, and they're like, no, 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 stay, stay off. <laughs> I don't know, because it's just... Ooh, it, where is that guy? The Well, that's what I'm saying. The fact that we've heard nothing tells me that he's not close, because well, usually... They, dude, the Sharks' official Twitter account, like five games ago, cryptically put out a tweet of a water bottle that had Nudavar's name, or number on it, and leading you to believe that, oh, okay, he must be getting close. And then well, I think it was radio silence. Like, well, I think it was a. If you look at that picture again, there was like a a, a dog bull on the bench. So I think it was like a red oh, herring for the for, for the service puppy. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it, I, all I know is it stirred up a lot of people. Go, oh, is Nudie back? Mm -hmm. But hmm. oh, uh, okay. Look, get him in. Get him in. I see you, Metal Mario. AJ, love you, but gotta rev in those eleven points in ten games for Carl. <laughs> Go ahead, come on, you know. We love it's it. a, the whole thing is people. Oh, you hate him. You hate him. I don't hate the guy. I just want to see him perform to what he's paid for. Let me read you something. Okay, here's a quote. I've had no question for years that on any given night, Carlson can be one of the best players in the world. But the true best players in the world bring it most every night and for an entire season, which Carlson has not done since he was with Ottawa. Is that? Let me ask you, uh, everybody in the chat, would would you consider a quote like that to be a, a hater? No, I think that's fair, and and it's basically the same shit that I've been saying. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it it's like I said before. Here's the problem. By, by the way, that was uh, Shang Peng. Here, well, and here's the problem with the commentary on Eric Carlson is if you if you uh, not you personally, but just generally, you? Speaking, if you don't like Eric Carlson, you're dissecting everything he does, everything he says, every little thing is being dissected. Mm -hmm. If you love Eric Carlson, oh, he can every, do no wrong. Every, well, yeah, you could do. Oh my God, did you see how he held the door for Hurdle? What a guy! Oh. When. Everybody on the team has held the door for somebody at some point, mm -hmm. and so you kind of you kind of have to live in the middle. And this goes for not even just Eric Carlson; this, every player on the team. If you play good, you'll get your props. If you don't play good, you're gonna get criticized. It's and it has every player is held to that same standard. The only difference is when you are getting a certain amount of ice time and when you're getting a certain amount of dollars per season. Your expectations Ex mm -hmm. are worth more. Exactly. Marty in the uh, chat. AJ may or may not hate EK65 more than Lacey hates Nick Chichek. Again, I don't hate Eric Carlson. I want him to live up to his contract. That's all it is. <laughs> and so when I call out that he doesn't, that's somehow misconstrued as hate when that has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's please not go down this goddamn rabbit hole for the umpteenth time billionth time uh the is this the trick of the week is that what we're doing with with halloween tomorrow yeah so eric carlson was the treat now we need to figure out who our <laughs> trick is yeah this is when you pull it out and it's what a bag of mayonnaise taped to an apple or something um i would say if i was going trick-or-treating and or say i'm going through my candy and like i dump it out and it's like ooh, whoppers 
Like that's Oh, uh, how dare you <laughs> disparage the good name of Whoppers, my friend. <laughs> Let, let's we got to find one that it, we both are like, "Oh, hell no." What are your what are your feelings? Candy corn. Up, oh, I'm right there with you. Yeah. To hell with this candy is corn. The, your candy corn of the week. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I mean, we mentioned it earlier, LeBanc. I mean, bro, Shit. Nieto has twice as many points as you. He has a better shot percentage than you with less time on ice. And Neitz isn't even on the fucking power play. Like, banker, how the hell has he only been scratched once? Well, and it's it's like I said before. You can make a convincing argument that Noah Gregor has not earned a right to be in the lineup. But how has LeBanc earned it over him? Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, AO saying like even if you Kevin don't, LeBanc. yeah, even if you don't like EK sixty five, you still want him to do well for the Sharks. That's it. But again, I don't, I I want him to perform to expectations. I think let me that's ask you. Best let me, way let me ask you it. a question. Yes, sir. Say say the exact the Eric Carlson that we've gotten for the last four years. Say it's the exact same Eric Carlson for the next Only, four. No, no, no. In in a hypothetical parallel reality. It's the exact same Eric Carlson, but the Sharks are a playoff team every year. Do we hear as much lip? I I it d- depends on I mean that's yes, I'd say we do if he's still not producing to expectations, you know, it's if it's uh Meyer strolling in, th- you know, throwing 35 goals on the, on the ice and Hurdle throwing down 30 Couture throwing down twenty five. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got other people, you know, dropping it. You get ten from uh, from Sturm, uh, maybe fifteen from Barbie. You know, and then if he's at the bottom, if he's, I mean, because what is he right now? He's like about a point per game. Exactly point per game. Yeah. 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 So at a point per game, I think if you know Carlson <laughs> throws the bag on the table and it's like. Uh, yeah, he's 0.2 points per game. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to, they even if the, the Sharks were doing well in every other place and headed for the playoffs, yeah, I'd still think uh, that you'd hear about it because... Well, sure, that's fair. You know, it, it, it all comes down to, um, you know, what are you bringing to the table? And so it's like if you're the one who, uh, you know, brought three plastic forks and everybody else has, you know, got the full spread... Bringing the chips and the in in all the stuff, and you're the, the you know the cat who throws down five napkins, like I people just, are gonna call you out. I just think I I think you're right. I still think it, it's natural to kind of question when somebody's not doing well, but I think if the Sharks were a playoff team, I don't think there would be a whole lot of vitriol surrounding it. I think it would be more so like, oh man, Carlson's got to get going, and then that would be it. You know, whereas now Carlson's playing poorly. And the Sharks as a team are bad. And so I feel like the two are sort of, you know, rightly or wrongly linked together. Hmm. Something to chew on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, year four of eight, right, on the contract? Um, It is year, Eric Carlson. Yep, year four of eight. Yeah, so we uh, got another four and change. Well, and I believe, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, like, and this would have been way before the pandemic, but I believe you had made the comment where it's like, I want to see, you know, once we're halfway through, I want to see where we're at. Yep. Well, we're almost there. Exactly. Uh, can he put together now? Here, you want to uh, you want to shut up the the quote unquote <laughs> haters? Sure. The, uh, get get the Norris this year. Win yeah. the win the Norris on this shit of a team. That will right. shut up a lot of people. It'll also bring up, you know, all the 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 goofballs that we're the haters now. Like that won't end for the entire summer. But it's like you want to shut a lot of people up. That'll do it. Oh, uh, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even we didn't even really get it all in all the way into our trick. But oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's no, I, that's I cool, mean, but... well, no, no, no. But I I named LeBanc. Who was yours for the week? Honestly, it was LeBanc as well. Oh, see, there you but, go. Easy peasy. But I, but I think you but I still think here's unfortunately, like the players who've been good are still good. The players who've been bad are still bad. See, so I thought you were gonna go with Cunning. No, but so it but but that's what I'm saying is so like because nothing has really changed, mm. it doesn't it doesn't lead to any new conversation. Like if I say, Oh, you know, Cunning still not doing enough, um Lindblom. 
Lindblom still not doing enough. Matt Benning still Lawrence. Just, you know what, Lawrence? He's cooled down since the beginning of the season, but I don't think he hurts the Sharks while he's out there. Yeah, but he started off so hot. Those two games in Prague, he was like, oh, who's this fucking guy? This is going to work out well. And then it's been... He's he's one of those guys. Like I said, you know, I you know we 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 got into it last year on the show, but you know for for fourth liners, if they're giving you a goal a month, they're doing their job. And <laughs> the calendar is about to flip, my friend. Well, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> Lawrence has a goal. So as far as I'm concerned, like I look at that and I'm like, yeah, you're fine. And you know, <laughs> Nico Sturm has bought up, bought up enough equity to not have to score until March, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's going to score more, but you know what I mean? So it's like, do you maybe want some more from Stephen Lawrence? Sure, but I think the expectations for him and what he's asked of, I'm I'm not really tripping about it. I think the one that I would really laser in on is Matt Benning just because he's he's somehow found himself as the number two right-handed defenseman behind Eric Carlson, and it's like you are the worst – plus minus on the team for one for two you've taken the second most penalty minutes and first among defensemen you were supposed you're you know as this second right-handed defenseman you're supposed to bring some offense he's brought none Mm. and he's gets i mean i could go on he gets walked he gets muscled off the puck like you think merkley's gonna get a look pretty soon especially if nidavar doesn't show up you know if the Sharks didn't have so many of the same kind of guy defensemen, I would say, yeah, probably. All right. I'm sorry, but kind of given the uh, Sunday night football, the horse side and Green Bay is just cracking me up. Like, they're down by 10 with three and a half left, and when Green Bay scored to make it, uh, to, to get it within 10, dude's doing a dance, and it's like, dude, you're losing. <laughs> uh, see, those are the players I hate. But anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, another team, shall we? So real quick, uh, and I think uh, did I did I see something that Ian is going to be doing a little teal tinted this coming week to uh, get into the Cuda? Is that correct? Did I see that? Um, I mean that's perhaps from what I understand that's the hope. I know there's some water around some, the water cooler. Yeah, I know. I know they've got some behind the scenes sort of planning going on. So uh, so we'll see. But I'm hoping you know hoping we get something soon. You know because I mean content is. Content is content, and you know, even though the the Barracuda, you know, they've obviously, I believe, they've lost lost their last two games, but they're still, I mean, they're still a really good team, you know, and they're worth talking about for sure. So the Cuda did play three this uh, week at home, uh, didn't win any of them. <laughs> for as great as it started, out, like started off what four and zero, and it was like, oh my god, they're gonna take the Calder in a walk, and then ooh, let's put the brakes on. Uh, a two-one loss to the rain. Strauss man's Barracuda debut and ceremonial exit. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude was uh, sent to um, the Wichita Thunder. Like, what a day after that! Like, you had to have been like, "Damn, that's kind of a smack." But whatever. I mean, it. Look, it, the good thing is, is it's going to get man more sp- starts. Well, and here's the, but here's the other thing. Like, yeah, like so. Okay, so Strauss man, he gets the loss, right? Still put up a nine twenty nine save percentage. Yeah, dude. Uh, and De- look at Dell out there killing it. I mean, he got a shutout in the home opener, and you know, doing well. Um, in that game against the rain, the lone Barracuda goal came from you guessed it. Thomas Bordalo continues to put the biscuit in the basket. Fourth goal in five games. The listed attendance was twenty two fifty two. <laughs> reports from people that were there said it was like 500. So wow. I don't I don't know where they're getting these numbers. I, dude, I got to tell you man, I saw some pictures, uh some clips from from the last couple of games from this uh past weekend. I it was so exciting the first those first two games that were there when they opened up Tech CU and all of that and it, it was pretty damn full and it's like oh my god, we're we're back to uh to SAP numbers. It's really yeah, sad. It it is, but it, at least they're in a more intimate environment. Yeah, it it it's not nearly as magnified. Where they're literally, you know, putting blackout curtains up and shutting sections down. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, for all the talk of the preseason uh, being family friendly, much more affordable experience or whatever, ninety percent of the complaints that I see in here, it's regarding prices being too high. 
you know, whether sure. it's parking, food and bev, tickets. I mean, the parking and the tickets, I don't know that I agree with. I mean, dude, you can go to a game for like 18 bucks, 13 bucks. I don't understand how you're bitching about the ticket prices, but I guess if you were paying, I don't know, seven before, you might have something to say. I don't know. I would just say my specifically with the parking and, and, you know, I understand, you know, being able to drive a car. I understand it's important for a lot of people, but that area of San Jose is very, it's very close to multiple light rail stations. Like why not do a park and ride situation or, you know, the 73 bus, very familiar with the 73 bus. It runs, it runs on center road, which is one street over from where tech CU is. Why not take the bus, you know, get some, you're worried about, you're worried about parking prices and, you know, maybe you have a couple, you know, you have a couple Colorado Kool-Aids and you don't want to drive, jump on the bus, jump on the light rail. Well, I'm, I'm not really, yeah, agreeing with the parking, the ticket food and the Bev. Absolutely. <clears throat> food and Bev is outrageously yeah, overpriced. And, it, and that's, you know, when I'm saying that, that it, that's not. <laughs> the Sharks and the Barracuda, they don't own that. That is across the board at events, sports, concerts, whatever. Paying Unless 20- you're the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, that's true. That's true. But yeah, $20 for a beer is asinine and ridiculous. And then, of course, they're going to sit there and go, I don't understand why we can't get fans earlier in here to eat and drink. <laughs> uh, well, and, the, and and that's what I always say. Like you, And I understand the NFL is a very different than the American Hockey League. I understand that, but the NFL, the, yes, but you know the Atlanta Falcons. They've been doing their fan friendly concessions pricing since the new stadium opened, and they're still in business. Yeah, shit works. Uh, over the weekend, the Cuda did drop two against the Roadrunners. Friday it was a five-one loss, so a little bit of a spanking. But Robin scored first, and then oh, the Road Runners answered with five straight. Saturday, a little bit closer. It was a four-three overtime loss. Makuta gave up two in the first period, but rallied to score three straight in the second from Gushkin, Reedy, and Eklund. And also, evidently, quite the line brawl yesterday. It looked like slap shot four. If you go on Twitter, <laughs> there's plenty. Of, there's some good videos of it where it was just like all out, dude. What the hell brought that on? See, and those are the things that you miss when you don't go to go see the CUDA. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, for now it's the Dell and Mac and the Emmy show and, uh, Strauss could, will get some more starts and hopefully uh, kick ass for Wichita. It's a light week for the CUDA. They don't play again until next Sunday. <laughs> so they could, I mean, you talk about getting time off, uh, against the Wranglers in Calgary. Jesus Christ. Not until, are they hitchhiking to Calgary? Is that what, I don't know. I miss the Stockton heat. <sighs> All right, let's get to our tweet of the week and start wrapping shit up here. <sighs> oh, I didn't do the. Hold on, I got to do the whole thing. Tweet of the week. So Greg Wojcinski tweeted something about the politics of tanking. Why the NBA is worried about it, the NHL doesn't think it exists, and why Brian Burke believes tanking quote attacks the very soul of the game. So Wojcinski did a whole column about this, but some chief came along and said, here's an idea. There should be reverse standings instead of a draft lottery. The team that accrues the most points post being mathematically eliminated gets the first overall pick. So that way you still have to win. You still have to try. You can't just sit there and throw your helmet out there and go, yeah, here, have at it. What do you think about that? Because is it... That's got to be tough though, because if you you know if some team is eliminated, like like say Anaheim, who could easily be eliminated before you're listening to this show on the audio stream, right? I mean, they could easily be eliminated by American Thanksgiving. So don't they have? You know, my point being is that oh, okay, so now they have all this time to, you know, when when a team gets eliminated mathematically. Earlier, they have more time to make up points. You know, that if they have 25 games left, that's 50 potential points, right? Mm-hmm. But another team gets eliminated with 10 games left, well, they can only accrue 20 points. Yeah, but I get where you're going with this. So but- is it like, can you do it by winning percentage? No, I wouldn't. No, because then, because then you're going to have the team that wins wins their wins one game after being mathematically eliminated and they're at 100% oh, winning percentage. You right. I I think the way that Cramp Survivor is kind of breaking it down, I actually really like the idea and I think it's okay because here's the thing. 
say Anaheim is mathematically eliminated, you know, on February 25th and they, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights are eliminated on April 6th. Well, you're still going to most likely see a situation where the team that is in need of a draft lottery win more still going to have the better odds to win the only, you know, between uh, Anaheim and Vegas. The only difference being you're not being rewarded for playing to lose. You know, you actually still have to put up an effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting deal. Of course, uh, Ian coming in saying, eh, leave the system alone. It's only a big deal when it's a non-traditional team winning the lottery, and if it's the Red Wings, it's working as intended. (laughs) Well, that's like, but you know what? But you look at with specifically the Buffalo Sabres, like back in 2014, 2015, they tried their absolute freaking hardest (laughs) to to suck out to win the Aaron Ekblad lottery. They didn't win it. Then they tried their absolute hardest to win the Connor McDavid lottery. They didn't win it. So like though teams like that, I definitely think are more of an anomaly, but still at the same time for the integrity of the game, you know, you don't really want to reward losing. Right. And, 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 you know, I'm like I said, I remember those Buffalo Sabres. I remember they trade away Ryan Miller and they get Yarrow Halak back in in the return, and then Halak makes one too many saves and he gets shipped <laughs> shipped out the door the next week. You know, so <laughs> I I remember and and yeah, it's good. I, I I don't think it's a good look to be openly playing to lose, and that's why I hate when these people say, "Oh, the, you have to tank." It's like, well. Like well, there's... no, if you're just if you're bad, you'll just end up where you're supposed to be anyway. Yeah, like I don't see players necessarily, you know, they're not purposely trying to lose, but obviously the GM and the can put together what would largely be construed as a bad roster, and the coach can misplay them. So... Well, it's like a, yeah, that's like I said, you know. Although I don't know they... too many coaches are going to find head jobs if they don't know how to properly deploy a team. Yeah, I agree. Uh, usually, you know, the tweet of the week we usually use to, uh, I don't know, have a little, uh, a laugh, you know, maybe we get a little sarcastic or have a little fun. So it, we might turn it around where it's like, Hey, let's talk about some interesting ideas, mm-hmm. but I do recognize that people do in fact need a laugh. So, uh, I will give you the, uh, graphics department for ESPN. Um, not sure it- why they're using the Tampa logo for the sharks, but. Here we are. The, then again, this is also the same company that employs Leah Hextall on Play by Play. It did, so. Does this mean that the Sharks actually went to the Stanley Cup final in the last three years? Uh, evidently, I will say out of the the one thing I love out of this is the hat that dude is rocking behind the bench. I mean, you know, old That's school, a nice hat. dude, old school starter. Love it. Dig it. Uh, the Sharks are going to continue a six-game homestand beginning Tuesday versus the Ducks, who are now evidently two and six after earlier beating the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who hasn't beaten the Toronto so far? Two six and one. Uh oh, two six and one. Okay, cool. Thanks for keeping me honest. <laughs> Show some respect to the overtime loser point. Yeah, dude, put some respect on that point. <laughs> two six and one Ducks, uh, followed by the Panthers. Last I five looked, three and one. Five three and boy, we are not putting enough respect on the loser point. So Panthers on Thursday, then hitting up the Ducks again on Saturday. That's an interesting schedule. Quirk. When they'll, when they'll be two seven and one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, dude, see the fun part is is that the Ducks play at SAP on Tuesday, then jaunt up to Vancouver, who are having a go of it, and then have to come back. I mean, the Ducks. This could be the worst week for them or the best week for them when you look at the standings. I just look, <laughs> It's like I the just three at, bottom feeders of the Pacific. I just look at that because, like, remember after the, the COVID hub season, they were like, well, players really responded to the consecutive games against the same team <sighs> method, and then they just didn't do it. They're like, well, okay, yeah, sorry. They okay. loved it, so fuck them. We ain't doing yeah. it. I mean d- – did the Sharks, I know they had like one last year, maybe two. Did the Sharks, I think they have one this year. Is it with Vancouver? I, yeah, I believe it's one. Yeah. I, yeah. Here's, I, you know, here's you, the other. How do you fuck that up? It's so simple. Well, so here's the other thing, the little, the other little nuance of it all. So as you mentioned, the Sharks, they're going to play the Ducks on November 1st, which is Tuesday. They're also going to play the Ducks November 5th, which is Saturday. You, between those two games, you know the only event that's taking place at the tank? 
the game on Florida on yeah. Thursday. There's no concert. There's no show. There's no nothing. There's no reason why it needs to be stretched out all the way to Saturday. You know what I mean? Well, it, uh, yeah, it makes me wonder, like, what does Vancouver's schedule like look like? You know, because, like I said, the Ducks have to go up to Vancouver between Tuesday and Saturday. You know, I, I know the circumstances surrounding it, were, surrounding it were obviously bad, you know, with, like, COVID, and we didn't really know a whole lot about COVID at that time. But I really liked the bubble playoffs because nobody could bitch about travel. Oh, dude, yeah. You know? That was really nice. And just uh, to, to feed in a little bit, uh, Green Bay went for a field goal. Dude totally shanked it. Oh, let it, can the kicker go down to the end zone and do a dance then? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway... Three games, two versus the Ducks, one versus the Panthers. Uh, I'm just going to assume that Balsers is going to have a goal and an assist in that game. Gah, let's hope. Right? Wouldn't that be great? So remember to check out our post-game casts following all of those games. We got Landy, we got Dana, Puck Guy, Ian. Um, if you happen to uh, see Mark, let him know we're around. It's been a minute. I don't know. Has it been on a milk carton? Hey, now. Nah. All right, you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore strong. And remember to leave your take in the comment section of this YouTube video if you were unable to join us live. And if you have any topics that you want me and Jerk to bullshit about, hit us up on Twitter at Pucknologist. Jerk, uh, before we get out of here, your famous last words. We're getting better. We're getting better, dude. We're, we're at solid 90. What was the last show? Three and a half hours? <laughs> it's a tight no longer you know we're not doing the tight 180 anymore uh so tight <laughs> so tight final last words or final thoughts or whatever you said i i'm i know you saw it because i know we talked about it uh, on the side here but i did you see the actual clip of uh daryl sutter intimating that huberto had to take a bathroom break no what what oh, what did i okay. miss God okay so so i'll break it down for you so and, and i'll post the link in the youtube chat just so everybody else knows what i'm talking about so Hell yeah jonathan huberdo missed some he missed some time in the first period uh of the game of the calgary fans last he game. had to drop a deuce well so somebody in the media they asked her also they're like hey you know Huberto missed some time. You know, is there? Can you tell us anything about that? And you know how Daryl Sutter is. He's very stoic oh, and very just monotone. He was like, deadpan. Right. literally, this is what he said, word for word. Oh, I think he had to take a shit. <laughs> didn't smile. Didn't laugh. Didn't do anything. Just dropped that and just I and then just fucking stood love there. Sutter. Stood there. Just sat there and waited for the next question. So that was. <laughs> You know, did, I, well, I, did it? Did you hear like any like giggles from the media after that answer? Uh, I I'd have to go back and listen to it again, but it's just Dude, you know, in like, in terms of things like that for me, in terms of things that like gave me a good laugh this week, that's number one. You know what I think? This is I'm gonna just throw this idea out there, and if you decide to do it, at least just throw me the credit. Somebody needs to. You know how you can like cut. Obviously, in Photoshop, you can cut people out of shit and then put them in a different area and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you can, the technology exists that you can do that with videos, right? Okay. Imagine this, dude. Some of the, uh, so, <laughs> somebody get creative if I had the time. You cut Daryl Sutter out of, you know, the, whatever the, the, whatever the background is, the press conference background, and you throw, the brick wall behind him and you put the little thing that says yuck yucks or whatever, you know, the improv, some sort mm -hmm. of co the comedy store, put that as the backdrop. And after some of his, you know, commentary or whatever, you drop in the laugh track from a comedy place, <laughs> you know, and you, you can hear like in the background, like a couple glasses clinking and people, you know what I mean? Like yeah. put that as the music or the, the, the voice bed underneath. Oh, dude holy crap would that the, i would follow that account you know anytime daryl sutter says something like that you just drop in like he's telling a joke like are you familiar with uh, either mitch hedberg or steven wright no both of them are very kind of deadpan comedians like particularly steven wright he used to have this thing where he's like uh i i bought some powdered water i'm not sure what to add mm-hmm 
A lot of deadpan stuff like that. It's something about like, uh, I have a friend who's very, very short. He, uh, he poses for trophies. You know, it's a little guy on top of the trophy. I don't know. It's, I can't do him justice, but he's very, very deadpan. If someone were to put that together, see now that to me, that's some creativity. That's interesting. I would somebody do that, please. Can that be my Christmas wish? Um, so my famous last words, I, uh, well, I'll do them in a second. I want to know where are you guys at with this team? You want more wins or do you want to embrace the suck in hopes of getting Bedard? And I ask that in, hopefully you'll leave your answer in the comment section of the video. Let us know. Cause that'll, that can be something that we'll dive into next week. So remember to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on social media, and if you listen to the podcast on something like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, whatever, help us out. Hit that subscribe button on there. Leave a review. That always helps us out, particularly on uh, Apple. And you can find links to our social media podcast apps and more in the included show notes. So that's all we got. As always, find everything on tealtownusa.com. And everybody wants to know, what about the fucking lunchbox? Okay, then. <laughs> uh, the the jerk man and I were gonna didn't you had a question but I I wasn't that big of a fan of it and I think it's something we need to mull over. Sure. So, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna have this giveaway. But the other thing is, I, I I've procured a couple other things, including for those of you who are uh, unsure, this might not be the only one I have. Okay. So. I think next week we're going to have to start maybe like the, uh, the, what the, uh, the 12 shows of Christmas, the 11 goals of Eric Carlson, something like 11 points of Eric Carlson. Uh, but we're going to, we're going to come up with something and, uh, we're going to give away some stuff next week and we're going to, uh, do it throughout the show. I think I'm going to put together three giveaways. This is definitely going to be one of them. And, uh, jerk and I are going to, uh, talk offline and figure out a, fair and just way to dole out the goodies none of this don't be prepared to get on wikipedia and try to game the system or hit google and try to game the algorithm so just uh you'll you'll have to be on the ball next week is the answer nieto you will have to find out <laughs> it could be very well might be we're not sure so I thank you so much again, as always, for joining us. I know you can do better things with your Sunday night than hang out and listen to a couple of slap dicks, but hey, we have a good time. Thanks for watching, listening, and we will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific, right? No, no Pucknologist takeover? No. Cool. So have a happy and safe Halloween. Hopefully you get all the candy that you wanted, and we'll all, uh, I don't know, get the chocolate fix in. Yay? Sounds good. Good night, everybody.